Uh. And welcome back to Otaku No Video. As always, thank you very much for joining me. Where today I'm reviewing Akira. And seriously, if you haven't seen Akira, just go and watch it. It's available everywhere. So Akira came out in 1988 and it really changed the anime industry. I have another video about this, but in brief, um, up until this point in Japan, uh, anime still had something of a made-for-kids um, um, reputation within general Japanese um, uh, thought. So most Japanese people, they respected anime, they liked anime, they, they'd, they'd seen some cool stuff out of anime. Um, but Akira really changed how much people thought that anime could be made for adults and that anime could actually tackle um, more serious uh, material and more serious content. More importantly, it was so financially successful that it opened the doors for a lot of the more uh, gory, adult-oriented stuff of the 90s. It also came to America and spawned a large portion of the American anime industry, but that's neither here nor there. Now, Akira was already a very successful manga in Japan. Audiences going to theaters already knew they were going to see a dystopian uh, film about a near-future Tokyo full of biker gangs and uh, government conspiracies and hyperviolence. And boy, does that hyperviolence look gorgeous. Uh, Akira had the highest budget of any Japanese film up to that point, and it shows. There are simply no animation shortcuts. Even in uh, dialogue scenes, characters are moving their hands and hunching over and doing lots of things. Moreover, the artists favor large amounts of background details and these locations that feel absolutely immense. Uh, there's a real difference between how uh, TV series tend to structure their stuff uh, and how they tend to display the sense of scale and how movies it tends, to just, tends to do that. Um, Akira just feels big. Moreover, Akira is paced quite effectively. Um, the plot is revealed um, quickly but deliberately and, and quite clearly. Moreover, action sequences feel chaotic for those who are involved but very clearly represented for the audience. So you know who's in what scene, where people are relative to each other, things like that. Now, if the film fails anywhere, it's in the characters. The original manga is thousands of pages long, and so the film just adapts the first one-sixth, the first volume out of six, actually, of Akira. So, as you can imagine, a manga of that length um, develops its characters deliberately over time, um, and relatively slowly. Um, and because we just see the very beginning of the story, basically, um, uh, the characters just don't get much time to develop at all. Moreover, because it's an action movie, the story just leaps from plot point to plot point without really establishing character in any detail. In fact, the characters mostly do two things, react to explosions or stand around looking grim. Moreover, the dialogue is effective but unremarkable. You're not going to remember a lot of the, uh, the dialogue in Akira. Now, characters do have distinctive speech patterns, certainly, but it's much more pronounced in the manga. Uh, and I'm not one of those, you know, the manga is better people, but this is one of those cases where the manga is just so much bigger and so much more uh, rich and complex, um, uh, and the movie is just so constrained that, you know, um, uh, it is more constrained. Now, some people have difficulty with Akira's realism and lack thereof. Early in the film, it establishes a very gritty sense of realism, where biker gangs have lead pipes and punch each other in the stomach, and it's a very realistic level of, of violence. But as the movie progresses, the violence gets increasingly over the top. Now, this is clearly intentional, but uh, some folks find this bizarre and just hard to stomach, frankly. That said, the violence can get quite intense at times, so be prepared for some things that are outright grotesque. Now, if you want to watch Akira dubbed, be aware there are several English dubs of Akira. The first was by Streamline, made quite a few years ago, and has the standard flaws of dubs of that time. If you check out the Genion dub, made more recently, it's a much more polished, much more professional dub. Akira is definitely a classic. Um, because it's an action movie, it doesn't have the depth of some other films and some other works. But we do get a beautifully animated story with just enough symbolism to kind of whet our appetites 
and make us wonder what else is going on. It's an impressive work no matter how you look at it.